Hey guys, today I'm going to tell a story. Uh, this Reddit post made me remember a story from two years ago where one of the local game stores in my area purchased a huge collection which was from an ex-girlfriend and she had no value as to what the collection was. It was very apparent. I was actually at the store for Friday Night Magic. The owner isn't there, but the person who is making the purchase called the owner and said, okay, this is what they have in. They have multiple fetch lands. They have multiple foil fetch lands. Uh, JC Mind Sculptor, from what I could tell, there was anywhere between $1,500 to $2,000 retail, which let's say buy list is $750 to $1,000 is what she should have received. Buy list. Now, that particular local game store only pays about 25% or 10 to 25% of what the card value. So they made her offer of $120, which she quickly accepted. And they purchased the collection and the collection was gone in no time because this was before the reprints. This was when fetch lands were incredibly expensive. I remember in particular, there was a Verdant Catacombs near mint just the best gem mint vernum catacombs foil i've ever seen and there were some other good foils it clearly was someone's entire collection and she didn't even even looking through the first box you could tell that there is enough value to justify buying this for at least 500 eventually you know upwards of a thousand in terms of buy list so let's t take a look at this reddit story I had a falling out with my not now ex-girlfriend. She appears to have stolen my MTG collection. The local game stores have been notified and know me well enough that I think they will notice, notice if she tried to sell my stuff there. Since yesterday, she has apparently gone to both Baltimore and somewhere undisclosed to me in Virginia. I, I don't know why he just is, <laughs> I guess he's describing her in case someone sees her, right? In a very vague way. She's a... Pretty girl, a little on the tall side, with short brown hair and gray blue eyes. The main identifier is that most of my cards were in a yellow and black book bag with a Kingdom Hearts pin on it. There were four commander decks, one standard deck. This is kind of the collection that came in two years ago. They were fully built up decks in there. And even to the point that one of the EDH decks was quite valuable. You could tell that that was probably his main EDH deck and then there were several other ones. And one popper deck. Um, blah, blah, blah. Or, and my car got stolen last night on top of it. May or may not be related to X. Yeah, so it's probably more common than you would expect from the ex's perspective, the guy probably spent a lot of money on magic cards and she doesn't know what magic cards are. She just knows that he spends a lot of money on it. And she can probably go to a local game store and get some of the money back. And in this case, selling $2,000 worth of cards for $120 is okay when you don't know what the value is, right? It's, I'm not saying it's okay to, for her to do so. I'm saying it's okay you will take the 120 if you have no idea that you what you have can easily be buy listed at 750 or 100 dollars and that gets me to the next story so my significant other right now the reason that we haven't really got married is because she has a lot of student debt loans student loans i don't have any and i have the car i don't have any car loans i don't have any student loans and I have a lot, a huge mortgage on a home, which is a lot. Um, it's a lot of money. So I want to, and my name is on the home alone and my name is on my car alone. And she doesn't really have a car. So she does use my car quite often. It's kind of a work at home scenario where I don't feel like, mm, you know, it's not a scenario where I can see growth in terms of, oh, she's going to be able to pay her student loans in the next year or two years. I was very fortunate in that I don't have any of those right now. And before she was playing Magic, so she does cosplay and she has friends who do cosplay and she's part of that community. 
she didn't really understand what was happening with Magic Heart, right? When we moved into the uh, new home, she still has an apartment in town. And actually, I do stay at the apartment in town quite often because uh, it depends. Like, sometimes I want to hang out in town. Sometimes there's a concert. Sometimes there's an event in town. I don't want to drive all the way. I live outside town. And one of the mysterious things about Magic Hearts is she knows that money is being put in. And she knows money can be taken out, but she's not sure how much money is being put in. So if you asked her like the value of a Philia, she would just assume it's $2 because that's what I bought them at. And she doesn't really, from the outsider, you wouldn't expect these cards to go up or down, right? And that's the same with comic books. It's the same with uh, trading cards, autographs, uh, any memos, uh, memorabilia from sports. There's this concept that you will lose a lot of money when you resell it to a store, but you undervalue it because you value it at the price that it was purchased at, and then you cut from that price. You're not cutting from the new price. So if I lay a buy listing at two dollars, it's too much, right? It's I mean, I would never do that because she can buy a list for four dollars. You can sell her on TCG Player, assuming she's eight dollars still today. But when someone's trying to sell what they believe is a $2 card to a local game store, they might take 20 cents on it. Although the card is actually worth $8 and you can buy list it for four. And that's kind of what happened to, and I told, I told the FNM dude, is like, dude, you don't want to buy this collection. You really don't want to buy this collection. And the problem was if he didn't buy the collection, someone would have approached her at the, she was very adamant on selling the collection. And there was already a bunch of sharks on the table and they were all ready to make a move. And they would have approached her at, outside her car to buy the collection anyway. So at least the store made some money, which they made a lot. They sold, they essentially sold the uh, collection within that night. Uh, there was so many great stuff. It was literally somebody's ED. I didn't buy any of it. And I told people not to buy it because of this situation where it could be considered stolen. I do feel like this is a common, you know, it's something common, right? Where if an ex-girlfriend who doesn't know about magic breaks up with you, then she might take whatever you're putting your time and money in. Right. She's like, oh, well, this person spends money every Friday into this magic backpack. I don't know what's in it. I don't know its value, but I'm going to sell it. And any amount of cash she gets from it, she will take because she has no idea that it's $2,000 she's holding. It's a, very, a sad scenario, but I feel like it is common. Uh, it's not uncommon. It's not something that I wouldn't, that like, I, it's unbelievable. The question is, should the store be willing to buy it? And then should the players be willing to buy it? In this case, you have an interesting dynamic where if the store did not buy it, the FNM person knows for a fact that the sharks will crowd her outside and then give her $200 for the collection. Because why wouldn't you? The collection's worth 2000 So the store at least purchased it. Um, he made a phone call. I should, you know, if I wasn't so upset with the uh, situation, I would have purchased a Verdant Catacomb. Essentially, it was selling stuff 50% off, right? When you bought it for a 10% or you bought it for 5%, you can sell it for 60%. <laughs> the margins are still insane. And I was thinking of getting Verdant Catacomb, but I didn't get it and the foil one. And that would have been the fourth foil that I could get from the original Xenicar. I really wanted that foil, but you know, at the end of the day, principles, you have to live by your principles. And I think that that's quite interesting uh, that this comes up because this is the second time. And this reminds me of the one time I, I have a video about it where the girlfriend sells a collection. A lot of that, I don't, I didn't realize how valuable the collection was and maybe the collection gained value throughout the time because they had a lot of modern staples that were not valuable then but that are now valuable today it had just had a ton of man lands a ton of them uh, because the guy played during zendikar and a ton of full art foil zendikar lands he just probably opened several cases of zendikar and the set that jsd mind sculptor is in and went to town. Anyway, that's it, guys. Bye, guys.